He's already here wherever we are sitting, as he promised. So let us get connected to here, heaven. Let us detach our connections from this world and get connected to heaven. Hallelujah. All the angels are down here with us. Hallelujah. Thank you for the cross, oh Lord. Thank you for the price you pay. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this life, oh Lord. Thank you for the nails in his hands. Wash me in your cleansing blood. Now all I know, your forgiveness and grace. close for us. Every moment of our life, we should be thankful and grateful for what he has done on the cross for us. His hands been pierced by the nails. He shed even the last drop of his blood for us. He bore all our sins and shame on the cross to redeem us, to sanctify us, to give us the salvation freely. Remember the goodness and mercy he has for us, for all of us. And the favors he poured upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Son of God is sitting on the throne. Hallelujah. The darling of heaven crucified. And so he has been honored. And he has become the most high priest for us. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings again. Thank you for filling us today one more time with your Holy Spirit. We need a new encounter happening today, tonight, in Lord Jesus. As we are coming in one accord in different houses, we are sitting down. Oh Lord Jesus, let your presence take control. Everywhere where people are sitting, 
We need more power and loudness, the Lord Jesus. Fill us one more time with the power, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us sing and say that, Lord, we need more power and loudness to give hallelujah praises to you, Lord Jesus. Wherever we are lagging, wherever we are lacking something, Lord, you fill us with your power. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. I will I worship you with all of my life. I will worship you with all of my heart. I will worship you with all of my soul. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. Oh, you are my Lord. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. I will worship you with all of my heart. I will worship you with all of my life. I will worship you with all of my mind. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. Are my Lord. More love, more power. More of you in my life. More love, more power. More of you in my life. Oh, I will worship you with all of my life. I will worship you with all of my life. I will worship you with all of my heart. You are my Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Give us more power and the love in us, the Lord Jesus. We want to worship you with our life, our heart, and our mind and soul. We submitting and surrendering ourselves, the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are my Lord, the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you glory and honor. We magnify your name, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name. Thank you, Lord Master. Thank you, Lord Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and worship Him. Open your mouth and give praises to the Lord Almighty. And remember, hallelujah, He has protected you once again. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I say hallelujah. Let us hallelujah raise our hallelujah to Him. I raise the hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise the hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise the hallelujah over the knees of my enemy. I raise the hallelujah. The heaven comes to fight for me. 
Are you ready to raise your hallelujah to the Lord Almighty? Give hallelujah, glory and honor. Clap your hands and sing. I raise the hallelujah. Thank God for this wonderful opportunity God has given me to be with you all uh, in different houses. We are not in one building, but in the spirit, we are all joined together. Amen. Yeah, praise God. And uh, we had a wonderful worship today. Awesome worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, yeah, last night, I was just meditating and I was praying regarding tonight's meeting. I was asking the Holy Spirit uh, what to share and uh, those things. And uh, normally, like after 10, 11 ish, I just go to bed and spend some time uh, in prayer. And after that, I just go to bed. But last night, I couldn't sleep. I mean, I was awake for, say, like around 2 33 ish. Then I went to bed. Um, the reason um, I couldn't sleep was I, I could you know, feel the presence of the Holy Spirit was so heavy and the Lord was, was just speaking to me uh, in different angles. And uh, tonight I just believe that um, 
God is going to touch many of you who are online. God is going to shift you. He wants to change you. He wants to transfer something into your life, wherever you are. Whatever you're facing today, God wants to, you know, heal you. Uh, as you all know that um, uh, all over the world is in lockdown. People are just struggling in many areas um, during this lockdown. I, I receive many phone calls via WhatsApp. People ring and they just keep on saying all sort of things happening, um, you know, in the, in the personal family life and things like that. And uh, last Sunday, uh, I asked, you know, in Sheffield Church, what, 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 is a, what, what, what is it about today? There is something about today. And a few of them came with the, uh, with the right answer because um, we, we started this, um, uh, this uh, prayer meeting, uh, Zoom meeting, like uh, 50 days back. Now today is the 56th day of our Zoom meeting. We got every day Zoom meeting. And uh, it, has been, it has been a real blessing to, to many. And, um, and I believe this evening also, uh, you know, Christ Revelation Church also had a couple of meetings. Um, uh, they think most of the time they, they also had meetings. And um, uh, people just ask this common question. Uh, what have you got during this lockdown? Uh, what is it happening? Because I've, I've lost some, my job. I lost my, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling with my health and, and all sort of things people just keep on saying. But one thing we know that personally from my side and uh, Few of, few of them just shared their testimonies, testimonies also with me that um, uh, during this lockdown, uh, one thing we learned is we, we, we learned to spend more time in his presence and more time in prayer. As you can see on my profile background, you can see prayer changes everything. If you got a prayer life in your life, if you got a prayer life, it can change everything no matter no matter what all what all things is standing in front of you only prayer can change things not money can't change anything your job can't do anything doctors can't do anything nurses can't do anything nobody can do anything only prayer can change everything so tonight i just want to encourage you um regarding prayer because that, that that's that's the uh you know the topic which god has put in my heart and uh I would like to, if you are at home, I know I can't see any, any of you, only Pastor Manoj and family, apart from that, nobody, I can't see anybody, but uh, if you, if you can just, sorry, if you can just, um, you know, turn your Bible to book of Colossians, chapter four, verse two, book of Colossians, chapter two, chapter four, verse two. Continue in prayer. Uh-huh. Watch in the same with the thanksgiving. Praise God. I don't know which version is that, but uh, a different version. It says, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Amen. So God is asking as a believer, what we got to do is we got to devote ourselves in prayer. Because God wants us to have a prayer life. It's not just a, just a common prayer life. Normally, when you're going to get up, just, you know, uh, it's like a, a one, one minute prayer, just 40 seconds prayer. No, no, no. It's, that, that's not prayer. You got to spend more time in His presence. Uh, I normally just, you know, tell my kids that when you, when you start your day in prayer and when you end your day in prayer, beginning and, and in between, God knows what all things are happening in our life. It's so important. Because prayer is, is about communion. Prayer is about communication. Prayer is about communion. Prayer is about communication. So what is, what is communion? You know that communion, we do communion uh, when, we, when we gather together. I know that uh, people have been uh, you know, asking and uh, they have been thinking about this Lord's table. Oh, pastor, when are we going to have this Lord's table? I'm, I'm really struggling. I was just thinking, I mean, after this lockdown, uh, I think it's going to be July, um, July end. The church is going to open. That's what uh, that's what the information I got. But even though the church is going to open, uh, there there will be social distancing in the church building. That means 
um, you got to have a you know 50 100 people you got to have a 200 200 people space to to put them together in the church building um normally with the catholics and other 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 religion I mean, like you know I mean, religion the christian community normally they what they do is they just go into the church and they spend some time in prayer and they will leave but for us we got to gather together as as a, as a community and spend time in prayer and things like that so uh, so communion means it's like a it's like a lord's table it's one body and we are partaking with it so it's, it's a communion and secondly it's a communication you know communication we we ring we speak to people now it's it's via zoom we are we are we are we are, we are chatting i mean like you know I'm, I'm speaking to you wherever you are it's via zoom so zoom is use, using the platform to to you know communicate so these are the two things one is communion one is uh, the other one is communication god wants us to have a personal communion and communication with him so that he can download stuffs into us so that we can give it to others without receiving from him we can't give anything to anybody it's not possible at all here paul is saying that you got to devote yourself to prayer you got to set apart you got to spend time in his presence no matter what all things are going through you got to find time to pray and again after that he's saying uh, being watchful that means why is that he's saying that you got to be watchful because the devil is a liar he is just devouring around the world he is just trying to find people to to attack and to bring them down so that so that he can he can come in and he can just discourage people so during the time he's saying that while you are praying make sure you 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 watch yourself and also be thankful for everything some people ask me, Pastor, what are you talking about being thankful at, at this mom, at this time? Because I have lost everything. I lost my job. I, I lost my health. I'm having that problem. I have this problem. How can a person be thankful in the situation? I said, our relationship with God is not based on our visa or our health or our finances. No, 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 no. It's a personal relationship. It's between me and my God. That's a personal relationship. You got to understand this people of God. You should have a personal intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And you got to have, you got to find time to spend time in his presence and to ask God, God, speak to me. What should I do? Because when you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation again and again, you can see that people of God, they spend time in his presence. They spend time in prayer. Even Jesus taught, taught in, 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 uh, in, uh, in Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. They are the Gospels. In the Gospel also clearly talks about prayer because only prayer can change everything. Let's, let's look at a few verses from the Bible. Okay, um, you know, well, what does the Bible talks about? What does the Bible say about prayer? You've got to understand this. What does the Bible say about prayer? Prayer is speaking with God. Let's look at Jeremiah. Chapter 33. I know that you you all know this verse by heart. It's, it's a very familiar verse. It's from Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Can somebody read it for me, please? If you can. Jeremiah. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things. So once again, please. From, from the beginning, yeah, please. Call unto me yeah. and I will answer you. Yeah. And show thee great and mighty things. Amen. Which, which thou knowest um, not. I think you are re reading uh, KJV, King James Version, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I th uh, the, the new King James Version is so so easy to read and it's very comfortable as well. The new King James Version says, uh, it says, call to me, call to me, and I will answer you. Some people, so somebody asked me, uh, Pastor, you know, I mean, have you got a, got a, got a number, or have you got a verse which which I can, you know, talk to God all the time? I said the mobile number of Jesus. This is the number you can you can you can ring this number, Jeremiah thirty three three. You don't need to hold. You don't need to wait for wait for half an hour. You don't because especially with the COVID nineteen at the moment, when you ring a customer service, they say you know another extra one hour even even we had some issue with the internet we, we have we had problems with the internet as well so we had to ring for the for the for the past two weeks we had to ring every day every single day to check what's happening what's happening because they, they were doing some work so uh, 
during during when when you ring them uh, there, there's a, there's an answer machine it says uh, you know waiting time is one hour but you got to understand this everybody is at home everybody is spending time with the family and uh, especially with the zoom hundreds of people are using zoom spending time in prayer even though in this busy schedule jesus is saying that from jeremiah 33 call to me and i will answer you there is a place for us to call upon don't think that we are on our own. There is nobody to look after us. There is nobody to, 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 to see what we are going through. No, come on, listen to this. Here, the, clearly, the Bible says in Jeremiah 33, call to me and I will answer you. It's just not, I'm going to answer you with a prayer request, but I'm going to show you great and mighty things. Amen. In prayer, you're not going to see all the stuffs going around you. You're going to see heavenly visions you're going to step into, into into a higher level of anointing and you're going to see what the lord got to speak to us he says i'm going to show you great and mighty things which you do not know you do not know many things but i am going to show you when you come into my presence when you spend time in my presence you are going to see great and mighty things in your life one thing I, I want I want you to understand as people of God, you got to you got to listen to this. You know, spending time in His presence, spending time with God, prayer life is not an easy thing. I'm telling you, it's not an easy thing. Some people take a decision. Some people, when 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 you know when when pastors preach uh, regarding this this they they they, they take a uh, you know quickly they take a decision. They say, oh yes, I'm going to take a decision from today onwards. After this message, this message is God is speaking to me tonight. God is speaking to me. And this day, especially May, uh, May 16th, Saturday, 21.30, 9.30 p.m., God is speaking to me that I need to increase my prayer life. And one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take a decision. I am going to pray from today onwards. I'm telling you, you won't be able to pray. The reason, you might, be, you might be thinking, why are you pastor saying that? Because... It's my personal decision. I'm taking the decision. I'm telling you, if you're going to, if you are going to take that decision, it's not going to work out. But one thing you got to do, you can ask this, Holy Spirit, I can't do it on my own. I need your help. I need you to help me to maintain my prayer life so that I can be a blessing to many. Praise God. It's, 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 it's asking the Holy Spirit to help you. Some, you know, youths come to me, you know, for counseling, they, they spend time with me. And when they, when they share their personal stuff, so they say, Pastor Uncle, from today onwards, I have taken a decision. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm, I, I just tell them straight away, come on, listen to this. If you're going to take that decision, you're going to fall. Because without the help of the Holy Spirit, it is not possible for anyone to overcome that. So to pray, if you don't have a prayer life in your life, I want to encourage you from today onwards, you ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, help me to pray. You know, I, I accepted Jesus Christ as my person in 1992 and uh, I got baptized in 1993. And from 1993, I used to, you know, ask because I was from an Orthodox background. So I didn't have a personal relationship with, the, with the Jesus or with God at all. So I was just living as a, as a worldly person. I asked the, asked the Lord after when I got saved, when I, when I got baptized, as you, as you know that when we get baptized, when we get saved, we are so, and you know, we, we want to hear, we listen to, to, to music, like, you know, Christian music, we listen, listen to the messages, go for the meetings, things like that. So I was asking the Lord, Lord, I want to spend time in prayer during the, during the night time. And it is a very difficult thing. And, you know, for, for weeks I, I used to pray. After a few weeks, uh, during, during like, you know, 2.55, 2.56, uh, before 3 o'clock, somebody will come and tap, 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 tap on, my, on, my, on my hand or, 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 or tap on my leg. Somebody, and I can, I can, I can clearly, I can sense, sense, you know, somebody just doing that. And when I get up, it, it will be around 3 each time. And during the first time, it was very difficult for me because uh, that time is, is the time, uh, you know, people just, I mean, we are tired, we want to sleep, we don't want to get up uh, at that time and, you know, just pray, but we want to sleep. But I asked the Lord, Lord, I need your help to, you know, to, to sit, sit in your presence and pray. And it, from, the beginning, from the beginning when I started that, it was very difficult. But after a few weeks, gradually, 
you know, I, I experienced myself that, you know, to get up, wake up early in the morning, like three-ish, and to spend time in his presence, it, it was such an awesome, awesome, awesome time. And the presence, you know, and the presence, uh, you know, during that time, uh, the presence I, I, I experienced in my life, I can't explain that to you via Zoom, you know, you got to experience that. You know, you know, in your in your prayer life, in your prayer room, and from today onwards, if you want to increase your prayer life, the only thing you got to do is you ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, help me. I want to increase my prayer life, and today God will touch you. God will change you. So people just ask commonly. They ask this question everywhere. Ask this question. Even maybe in Zoom. I think I think few few of you are there in Zoom. You might be. You also may be thinking. Uh, you know, how often should I pray? How often should I pray? Do you know something? Muslims pray five times a day. Jews pray three times a day. How many times should a Christian pray? Are you listening? Do you mean Muslims pray five times a day. Jews pray three times a day. How many times a believer should pray? You can, you can answer it by, by yourself. Yeah. If, if, if Muslims can pray five times, if Jews can pray three times, how much more we should pray? So this is a common question that people ask, how often should I pray? I'm going to take you to uh, 1 Thessalonians, if you've got a Bible, please. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, please. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. I'm going to uh, take it through a few verses which will encourage you. 5, 17, yeah. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 17. <laughs> 17, yeah, First Thessalonians. Pray without ceasing. That's it, that's it. Pray without ceasing. That means there's no gap at all. You can pray anytime. While you're watching this, you can pray in the spirit. While you're driving, you can pray. While you're cooking, you can pray. You know, the, 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 the best prayer, you know, I pray it is when I'm driving. Because sometimes you know, when I drive, I'll, I'll drive on my own. When I, when I go to, you know, places, I just go on my own. I just, you know, I can just shout, I can just cry, I can just scream, I can just, you know, sing songs. Nobody, nobody will be in the car. Only, only, only you know, uh, you know, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit will be with me in the car. So just, just, you know, you just pray without ceasing. There's, there's no limit at all. Not three times, two times, five times. You know, it's just, as, as I mentioned, Muslims pray five times, Jews pray three times. And as a Christian, we are, we got to pray all the time. Because the devil is, is looking for, for, a, for a bunch of people. To, he, is, he is just devouring all over the world. Just seeing that. Just looking for people who has no prayer life. So that he can just attack them. And, and he, he can just separate them from the love of God. So you got to understand this. You got to pray. Here Paul is saying, clearly saying, he's saying that you got to pray without ceasing. Most of the letters in Paul's, you know, you know, Paul, Paul's letter in Ephesians, you can see again and again, Paul just emphasized this, you got to have a prayer life in your life. Even, even every single person, even if you're small, if you're big or you're old, every single person, you should have a personal relationship with God. And normally, normally uh, people ask, uh, the first question is, you know, as, as I mentioned, first question was, well, you know, how often should I be? No, the, the other question is, what is God's will in my life? There's, there's, there's people ask this question. What's God's will? What one, what does God wants through me? What should I do? I mean, you got to understand this. Let's look at uh, Philippians 4 verse 6. Philippians. Yeah, 4 verse 6. Book of Philippians, please. Chapter 4 verse 6. I'm going to ask you to read a, few, a couple of verses too. Be anxious for, anxious for nothing, uh -huh. but in everything by prayer and supplication. Uh -huh. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Uh -huh. So be anxious for nothing. nothing. You don't need to be anxious about anything this evening. 
while you're watching this, if you're facing anything, if you're going through any difficulty, if you're having sickness in your body, if you're having financial crisis, I'm telling you this evening, you, talk, you don't need to be anxious about anything. Here, Paul is clearly saying, but in everything, you got to have what? Prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Let your request be made known to God. You don't need to tell anybody. You don't need to share this with anyone because me personally, I'm in Sheffield. You are in Birmingham, different places. I don't know wherever you are, but while you're watching this, you are in your house. You don't know what you're going through. You, you, you mean personally, myself, I don't know what you are going through, but you know exactly what you're going through. But you got to understand this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. This evening, can I just tell you, people of God, you got to bring all your stuffs into his presence and ask the holy spirit lord this is my this is my, my my stuffs which i'm going through lord i need your help lord i need your help holy spirit because without your help i can't do anything after this paul is saying in verse verse 19 if you if you just look at after after this uh, later in uh, four verse four verse 19 if you just check check the 19th verse if you can read that for me please yeah And my God shall supply all and my God shall supply all your needs. Oh, that, that's 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 very important. You got to underline the all. He didn't say little, he said all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. So in rich in his riches, all everything is covered. Not just, just a little. Everything is covered. So tonight, prayer can change everything. No matter what you're facing this evening. No matter what your struggle is. If you're going to tell me, Pastor, I have got no clue what my next step is going to be. I have no clue what I'm going to do tomorrow. Oh, I got to tell you something. You are on the right track. If you're going to tell me tonight that you have got no clue, I'm going to give you a good shake hand via Zoom because you are on the right track. Because if you don't know what you are going to do, what you're going to do next, he knows the one who called you, he knows exactly what you're going through, where you're heading to. The only thing you got to do is surrender yourself into his presence. If you're going to surrender yourself into his presence, he is going to guide you through because prayer can change everything. You know, Paul and Silas was in the jail. Paul and Silas was in the jail. They were, they were, they were in, in, the, in, the, in the pit, in the, in, the, in the darkest area of the cell. There were nobody else to help them. But the church was earnestly praying for them. And you know what happened? Just because of prayer, and praise all the chains were broken and the jailers and the whole people in the jail they came to know what the presence of the holy spirit was just because of a man's of a person's prayer you know when you talk about prayer in the bible again and again you can see that in the bible prayer means if you're going to ask anybody about prayer they're going to say oh yeah yeah there is a person who called daniel he used to pray how many times? Three times a day. When the verdict was against him, you know, when the paper was, the, 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 his enemies just went and showed the paper and said, oh, if you're going to pray again, you're going to be in trouble. He said, okay, I, I'm really sorry. It's, it's my time for prayer. I got to go in the upper room. I got to you know, open, the, open the window and I'm going to pray because, because that's my lifestyle. And he continued in prayer and he entered in, you know, lands den, but that was not the end. That was just a beginning for the nation to see that there is a God who is still living. Hallelujah. And tonight, I, let me encourage you people, when you're really listening to this, whatever struggles you're going through, through that struggle, God's name is going to be glorified through your struggle. 
because without a test there is no testimony you are going to bring out many testimonies so people people are going to hear it people are going to listen to it and they are going to say oh come on hallelujah oh yes it is god it is not a normal normal thing it is god it is done by god i'm going i would like to read a few quotes to you you know martin luther you know martin luther king you know what he, what he said he said pray and let god worry are you listening to me this is what martin luther said you pray and let god worry are you willing to say to tonight lord oh that's that's a good quote lord you i'm going to pray that's that's my job i'm not going, I, my job is to pray and your job is to worry i'm not going to worry about it's, it's not my job but now it's an opposite thing we are carrying we are worrying and we, we want to worry ourselves. We want to put pressure on ourselves and say that, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm telling you, you're not going to do anything. If you're strong enough, you know, just, 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 you know, keep the COVID out from United Kingdom. <laughs> you can't do it. No, no, not even a doctors can do it. Nobody can do it. Only prayer can do it. And prayer is, prayer is going to help us. And let me read another, another, another quote from John Wesley. He's from, from United Kingdom. You know what he said? I have so much to do that I spent several hours in prayer before I am able to do it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? He said, I, am, I have so much to do. I have loads of things to do. But I spent several hours in prayer before I'm able to do it. If John Wesley has said that, if Martin Luther has said that, have you heard of uh, Cory, Cory Ten Boom? She's, she's, she's a prayer woman. She's a prayer warrior. If you can just type in Google, you can see the Cory Ten Boom. Her books are really good. You know, you know what her quote is? Prayer, prayer, is, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? She's saying, she's saying it in, in a, one, of, one of her quotes, she's saying, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? Prayer shouldn't be your spare tire. Prayer should be your steering wheel. Because Without the steering wheel, you can't go anywhere. If you're going to tell me that, oh, pastor, I've got a Cadillac, or I've got a Rolls Royce, or I've got a you know, Ferrari, uh, okay? I've got the biggest, biggest car, or I've got a small car, even though whatever cars, cars you got, without the steering wheel, you're not going to take the car anywhere. So similar to that, as a believer, God wants each one of us to have a personal intimacy with them and to increase our prayer life in these coming days. In Sheffield, I encourage my kids, I encourage my youths, I encourage my church believers. I know that you are busy being an under Satan's yoke all the time, busy, busy, busy. I know that you're busy, but don't worry about your busyness. But during the busy period, you got to find time and you got to spend time in his presence because only prayer can do anything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And this evening, let me encourage you, people of God. I would, I would like you to read one more verse from Jeremiah. Please, Jeremiah 29, 11. Book of Jeremiah 29, verse 11, please. Yeah. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Aha. Uh -huh. Says the Lord. Mm. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Hey, he says, evil. I know exactly what is best for you. I know about your future. You don't know about your future, but I know what your future is going to be. Yesterday, I think day before yesterday, one pastor from uh, from where from Dubai came uh, online. You know, he booked uh, this this year. He booked for Johannesburg, for for Africa. He booked for United Kingdom. He was supposed to be here uh, during this time. I think in August or this time. Uh, he booked already booked the tickets. He booked the ticket to uh, go to states. He booked the ticket to uh, you know North India. All the tickets has been booked, but he had to cancel everything. Because there's no point, he can't travel. I don't know for, for how many months he can't travel, but he, he, he said, you know, he had to cancel all the tickets because that was his plan. But today, tonight, the Lord is saying, okay, every plan, your plans are good. That's fine. That's okay. But I have got a plan for you. And that plan is to give you a bright future. It's not to harm you at all. You might think that certain things which is happening to me, oh, that's going to hurt me. That's going to harm me. No, 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 no. That's not going to hurt you. That's not going to harm you. If you're under his wing, if you have a personal relationship with him, Lord is saying that I have a good future for you. 
even though you don't know i want you to understand this tonight i want to encourage you people of god while you're watching this through via zoom all oh, increase your prayer life have a personal relationship with them ask the holy spirit to help you ask the holy spirit to take you through amen hallelujah so how should you pray ephesians can you just take from ephesians 6 18 quickly please ephesians 6 18 please Book praying, of always yeah. with, praying yeah. always with all prayer and uh -huh. supplication in the spirit yes we, I, I, I love this version praying at all times in the spirit he wants you to pray in the spirit not just a uh, few times not just a couple of minutes not just a couple of hours but he wants you to pray all the time in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all saints so he wants to ask he's asking you tonight come on people of god ask the holy spirit to help you ask the holy spirit to, uh, to help you in this matter you can ask lord tonight this is my prayer this is my cry even even i am just asking god lord just help me yesterday as i mentioned you know when we, when we started i couldn't sleep last night i wanted to spend time in his presence lord i was asking lord just speak to me i want a word from you i don't want anything else lord i just want a word from me a word from him can change and transform the whole uh, the whole situation upside down just just a word from him so tonight i want to encourage you people of god just ask the holy spirit to speak to you and when you look at first john i'm going to i'm going to take it to a few more verses and we're going to pray first john 3 22 yeah please first john 3 22 if you can read there please and whatever we ask uh -huh. we receive from him yes because we keep his commandments come on come on listen listen you receive because what because you keep his commands because you keep his commandments you will receive him. and do and after that what he says and do do and do those things that are pleasing in his sight come on in my version it says and and do what pleases him it says and what do we ask we receive him because we keep his commandments it's not an easy thing it's a sacrifice but if you're going to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to keep your commandments, Lord. And he said, we are going to keep your commandments. If after that, if you're going to ask anything, it shall be done. It's not out of it. John chapter 15, verse 7, please. 15, 7. John. The last verse. John 15, verse 7. If you abide in me, if you abide in me and my words and my words abide in you abide in you you will ask what you desire come on you will ask whatever you want uh -huh. and, and it shall be done for you and it shall be done for you so if you want things to happen in your life the the key is you got to abide in him without abiding in christ you can't do anything even when 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 jesus was in this earth he he had a personal intimacy with the father all the time even when he when he went to raise lazarus he was just lifting his hands and he was just praying to god father if it is your will let that let that happen even even through when he was going to, to the cross also he was praying to the father he had a personal intimacy, personal relationship with the Father. Tonight, people of God, while you're watching this via Zoom, let me encourage you to have a personal relationship with Jesus. You should have a personal intimacy with God. You know, people, where you're watching this, you are alive, I'm alive. Not just because of our, our education or we got the mask or we got the glove. No, 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 no. It's just because he protected us. His protection is upon his children. 
I know there are many people struggling, many people going through lots of things. I know that we have been praying for, for the past 56 days. We have been praying for many, many, many people. They've been sending messages. They've been sending, sending through WhatsApp. They've been uh, you know, sharing their testimonies through Zoom. They wanted, they wanted prayer. They want a bunch of people to pray for them because they, they can't, they can't I mean, face the things which they're going, going through, even in Sheffield also. Well, they, 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 I mean, few families, they had to go through serious trouble. But the Lord protected them and the Lord has set them safe. But this evening, let me encourage you, people of God. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to have a personal relationship with Him. To spend time in His presence. I know that during, during when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior in 1992, I was so, so, so fire for Jesus. I wanted to read the Bible always. I wanted to share about Jesus to somebody. Hey, wherever I go, I just wanted to share. I wanted to go for meetings. I wanted to spend time in his presence. When it, when it, when it, you know, when, when years passed by, when I got busier and busier, my prayer life started decreasing. But during this COVID time, <laughs> let me tell you something, people of God. God just, you know, shook me and he said, now is the time you can spend lo loads of times in, in my presence, spending time reading Bible, you know, meditating, spending quality time with my family. I mean, it's so important. It's so important. And, fa and, and, and father and mother relationship, kids with the kids relationship, and also, you know, chatting with the, the families and the, the via Zoom, we just have a good communication, you know, communicating to, 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 towards people. All things are just happening. Everything is, you know, these, these things, for years, they, these things were not there. But now is the time to restore everything and to come back, to have a good personal relationship with God and to stay close with them. As we read today from Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, devote yourself to prayer. God wants you to devote yourself in prayer. And as, as I mentioned, prayer changes everything. Now, this evening, while you're watching this, if you're listening to this, let me encourage you, people of God. You know, there are certain things, nobody can do it. Nobody can help you. You, you might think that this person is going to help, that person is going to help. Even, when, even in, in, in India, we used to say that that doctor, he's a super, he's an awesome doctor, he's, he's, he's good. He, he, can, he can, you know, give good medication, he can do that. But with, now with COVID-19, Nobody can do anything. Only God can do. God can protect. He came to that point that only God can do anything. And can you just ask the Holy Spirit to help you this evening and ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life and say, Lord, I want to surrender myself into your hands, Father. I need your help, Jesus. I want to have a personal intimacy with you. I want to have a personal relationship with you. I, I, I just don't want to live a nominal Christian life. It's not about just getting, getting, getting a few things. That's, that's not about, that's, it's, it shouldn't be just, just to receive something from him, but it should be more deeper than that to have a personal relationship with him, with communion and communication with God. Can you just say a word of prayer as while you're watching this, wherever you are, if you could just, 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 just speak out and ask the Holy Spirit to help you and ask Lord, just, just say a word of prayer. God can touch you right now. Whatever struggles you're going through right now, in Jesus' mighty name, whatever pains you're going through, you might be, you might be facing a, a, a very, very difficult situation. Nobody knows about you. Nobody knows about your family. Nobody knows what you're going through. But can I just tell you something, people of God? While you're watching this, I can sense in the Spirit that the Holy Spirit is here in, the, in, in our midst in this meeting. The Lord wants to touch you. The Lord wants to deliver you. The Lord wants to bring you out. The Lord wants to protect you. He wants to open doors for you. He wants you to be a blessing. But if, if you are going to be a blessing, you can be a blessing to many. God wants to use you as a channel. God wants to use you as a vessel. And ask Lord, just pour out your spirit, Lord. Without your help, I can't do anything, Father. And I want to devote myself, Lord, for your glory, Father. Tonight, I want to surrender myself into your hands, Father. I ask you, Holy Spirit, come to my life. Let me have a personal experience from now on. Lord, wake me up, Lord, during the night. 
Let me spend time in your presence, Father. Let me cry out to you, Father. Let me stand in the gap for, to pray for UK, Father. Let me stand in the gap to pray for Birmingham, Father. Let me stand in the gap to pray for London, Father. Let the whole nation be awakened, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, just teach me, Lord, how to pray. As Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 33, 3 said, as we read, call to me and I will answer. And if you're willing to call to him tonight, God is saying that I'm going to answer whatever, whatever you're facing right now. While you're watching this, if there is anything you're going through, all financial crisis, I, I sense in the spirit, I sense in the spirit in the name of Jesus that all financial crisis, God is going to break that. He's going to open doors for you that nobody can shut. With five loaves of bread and two fish, he fed 5,000 people. If that is the case, with little thing you have, he can supernaturally increase and he can bless you right now. I'm going to pray for you. Let's close our eyes. But open our heart wherever you are. Just ask the Holy Spirit to come to you. Come into your room. Wherever you are, ask the Holy Spirit to come. Ask the Holy Spirit to touch you. Ask the Lord to help you to increase your prayer life. Yes, Lord, right now, Father, I just pray for every single person who is watching, Lord. Why is this Zoom, Lord? Father, just pray that you will bless them. Let them have a personal intimacy with you, Father. Let them move more closer to you, Lord. Let them not focus on the stuff which is going around them, Father. But let them focus on you, Jesus. And tonight, Lord, I just speak blessing over you, over them, Father. And Lord, without you, we cannot do anything, Father. But with you, we can do absolutely anything, Father. And this evening, Father, Lord, if anyone is struggling in any area, if anybody is burdened, is anybody is stressed, Lord, Father, just pray right now. All the stress I command in the mighty name, specifically stress I command in the name of Jesus to break loose. Spirit of acidity, I can sense acidity. If anybody is struggling with acidity, I command in the name of Jesus to break loose in Jesus' name. I speak healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. All migraines I command in Jesus' name. Break loose. Healing in Jesus' mighty name. All back pains right now in Jesus' mighty name. Healing in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, all stress, all tensions right now. I rebuke the spirit in Jesus' name. I speak healing right now, Father, while they're watching, Lord. Let your presence move in a mighty way, Father. Lord, touch your people right now. And Father, let them experience something new, Father. And let this be a testimony, Father. Let them tell people that what you have done in their life, Jesus. And Lord, I just pray for every single family who's watching right now, Father. Father, just pray that you will bless them, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for Pastor Manoj and uh, Sister Diana and, uh, and the kids, Lord. I pray that you will bless them, Lord. And Father, you have placed them in the, in, the, in the church, Lord, as leaders, Father. I pray over them, Lord. I pray blessing over them, Lord. Let them flourish in the name of Jesus. And let nothing, not, they, they lack nothing in Jesus' mighty name. Let them have an overflow in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, let them, let them have an increase in the mighty name of Jesus. Especially, Lord, I just pray that this church will be a praying church, Father. This church will be a praying church to stand in the gap for many, Father. And tonight, Father, once again, we thank you and we love you, Lord. We exalt your name, Father. And we promise to give you the glory. And we promise to give you the honor. And we promise to give you the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.